All right. Who remembered their homework? Oh, look at you guys. Who didn't remember their homework? Okay, well, they, you, know, you weren't here. Yeah. Um, the homework was a question. Why do I ask a question? Because you only spend so much time in church. The rest of the time you spend out with other people, uh, lost people, some of them, uh, or people who uh, are in a bad religion, and there are bad religions, okay? Um, or you're on social media, and a bad religion is trying to sway you in a way that's not right. Okay? So, John chapter 5 is where we were last Wednesday night. And I asked the question. Let me read the verse here. It's up on the screen. But uh, turn your Bibles there. Because this, this made the Jews mad. Okay? It made them mad. John 5, 17. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. So here he's announcing to the Jews that God is his father, which makes him God. The son of a duck is a duck. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck and rises from the dead like a duck, it's a duck. Okay, therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, which he didn't, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. So, can, can you, could, if someone was online, on let's say Facebook, and you were con they had made some kind of remark about Jesus is not God, he's not God the Almighty, that's a heresy, that's a false doctrine, on and on and on. Would you be able to, without calling Pastor Mike and saying, Pastor Mike, I need help here. Could you, from the Bible, prove that Jesus is God? Could you do it from the New Testament? Which I'm adding this to the question. Could you do it from the New Testament as well as the Old Testament? Could you do it? Okay. So, we had two people. So, who can do it, though, before I call on these two? Who's got a verse? Some of this is pretty simple. It's verses that, more than likely, you should be aware of. You've probably read them, or you're, and you're just not thinking of them. So, who could prove... That Jesus is, in fact, God from the Bible. I'll give you a couple minutes. Go ahead, Derek. That's what friends are for, right? Yes. Point, to their, point to their buddy. Uh, he can. He's a little nervous, isn't he? Okay. Well, I'm looking for a verse. I'm looking for a verse in the Bible that just says that, see, the Jews were mad. And to this day, the Jews are still angry. Jews are terribly angry. At Jesus. They, in 2,000 years, they have not gotten over Jesus. That's because Jesus is everywhere. And they are running from their Messiah, who they should be running to. But they refuse to believe. They won't read the New Testament. And they refuse to believe that Jesus is God. So that's what made them mad. So who's got a verse for me? All right, Steve. Uh huh. Then, now you're nervous, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> then jump 
down to 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Mm -hmm. And then First John 5, 7 then says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. There you go. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. All right, Alicia. John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. Uh, John 14, verse 10 and 11, Believe the Son, not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak out of myself, and the Father that dwells in me, he doeth the work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, for I also believe you today for the very work of sin. There you go. That's good. That was John 14. Okay. John, you got anything different? Yeah. Uh, two right. Right. Okay. Go ahead, Old Testament. Yeah. Daniel three twenty five. When Nebuchadnezzar saw the fourth and fire furnace, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, by the way, um, you mentioned Peter falling into the water. That's the that reminded me when we were in Branson a couple weeks ago. We went to see at the Sight and Sound Theater. We went to see their uh, play of Jesus. And I enjoy the Sight and Sound Theater. Uh, we've seen Noah, we've seen Joseph, and they've been pretty good shows. But I was not impressed with the Jesus play. Uh, primarily, there was a couple things that bothered me. One was John at the beginning, and he's writing uh, in the very beginning. How did, how did it go? It didn't say was the word. And you can, and you can tell he's writing John 1.1. 1, 1. He said in the beginning he already existed. And I went, no, that's not, that's not, the ver that's not John 1.1. 1, 1. Okay, I don't know what they were doing. So that bothered me a little bit. They did it twice. But then the characterization of Jesus, it was sort of like, a Jesus from California without the word dude every five minutes. Okay? It kind of, that is like a surfer Jesus. Okay? And I just, I, you know, if you've watched, um, it, was a, it was a 70s version done very well. Jesus of Nazareth with Robert Powell playing Jesus. To me, the best characterization of Jesus ever in any film, play, production, or whatever, was, I think his name was Robert Powell. Uh, but anyway, that's my favorite. Anyway, all right, not too bad. You had one? Okay. You believe he's God, right? Yeah. Uh huh. You know, and when he was crucified and when he rose from the dead, yeah. I don't think that they actually truly could accept that. Yeah. And, you know, they, they was unbelievable to, to them. Well, we know they didn't. Ex yeah, that's true. They didn't, they didn't accept it. The Jews rejected Christ, and God's plan was to then offer salvation instead of only to Israel, then offer salvation to us rednecks. Okay? Us plain common Gentile people. 
Let me show you what I have. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it says, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. So now we have Jesus not only being equal with God, but He's the Creator. And without Him was not anything that was made. In Him was life. Now we have Him giving life to everything that lives. And the life was the light of men. Now he's the light. Look at how much doctrine's packed in here. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not, which is why darkness likes to take John 1.1 1, 1 and rewrite it or retranslate it or do all kinds of weird things to it to make Jesus not God. As Steve said, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one which is probably why that verse was taken out of all the modern Bible translations with the exception of the King James because people just cannot handle the fact that it proves that Jesus is God. And as you said, yes, the Holy Trinity, this is the verse in the Bible that exclusively gives us this doctrine that Christ God the Father and the Holy Spirit, there is only one God as proclaimed by the Scriptures, and these three, I, I may not quite understand it, and I may not be able to explain the Godhead, but I believe it, that these three are one. Mark twelve thirty five, Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? Because that's, I mean, he is the son of David. He came from David's lineage, the house of Bethlehem, the house of David, uh, from Judah. How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said, by the Holy Ghost, and he's going to quote one of the Psalms, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So here's God saying to David's Lord, who happens to be David's son. Now, nowhere would a father ever call his son his master and his Lord. I don't to Matthew or Caleb. Okay? I don't say, yes, Lord, what, what do you want? Okay? Look at what he says here. The Lord, capital, and this is, one of the few occasions in the New Testament where you have Lord in all capital letters. The Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And he's talking to Jesus as the Lord. David therefore himself calleth him Lord. And whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. And that's the, that's the thing. Common people listen to this and they eat it up. Because here is God, high and mighty, who sent His only begotten Son to be lowly, like us lowly people, us working people, us whatever. He sends us, send Him down here to descend to our form and live our life. And common people love Him for that. Rich people can't stand it. Because to them, well, what is the... Televangelists say about Jesus all the time. They lie and say, Jesus was filthy rich. He was so rich, he had to have a guy carry his money around because it mentions that Judas had the bag. He was like the, the money holder for the 12 disciples as they traveled around. Somebody's got to handle the money and Judas was the guy. But so they're saying that Jesus was filthy rich and had houses everywhere he went and he had... And I'm going, that's a lie. It's an absolute lie. See, rich people can't handle Jesus being God. Uh, poor people, common people can. Philippians 2, 5. In fact, you could turn to these verses and underline these. And write them there, Jesus is God. This is a Jesus is God verse. J-O-G. Or J-I-G. Jesus is God. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In fact... This verse, Philippians 2, 5, and 6, go perfectly with what we read here in John 5. Because the Jews were mad that he made himself equal with God. Equal. So, Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, 
who being in the form of God, thought it, look at it, he's in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So when the Jews accused him of being equal with God, Jesus didn't go, oh, I, I didn't say that. I, I, I didn't mean that. You took, you said that. You took that out of context. He never, he never denied it, ever. Look at the number of people that bowed to him, bowed down to him, and worshipped him. John tried to do that with an angel in the book of Revelation. What did the angel say? Get up. You're going to get us both killed. Okay? So, verse 7, But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. Amen. That in the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is, and there's that word again, Lord, to the glory of God the Father. How is it that the name of God in the Old Testament, where in Hebrew it's yod heh vah we, we pronounce it Jehovah, but how is, that, how is that always translated in the Old Testament? Lord. Why? Because that's his name. That's what it means. He is Lord. So whenever you see in the Old Testament, all capital letters, L-O-R-D, you are dealing with Jesus. John chapter 20, verse 26. Look at what Thomas realized. Now ask yourself the question. Is this issue, does it, does it show that somebody who, if somebody doesn't believe that Jesus is God, are they lost? Are they, can they be saved? Okay, I think it's important to ask this question. Because you're, thank you, I believe that you are clearly denying Jesus as God. Now, some people, you know, learn as they grow. I understand that. I've had to change a lot of things over the years as I've grown in the Lord. But to just continue to deny groups like the Mormons. The Jehovah's Witness. Um, I would say Seventh day Adventist, and I would say, a, yes, Matthew. I was going to say, 1 John 4 3 uh, says that every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not God, and this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Yes, sir. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So it, it connects there that Jesus Christ is, in fact, the Word, and the Word was God. A growing number of, of liberal Protestant and Catholic scholars, even though Catholic doctrine clearly teaches that Jesus is God, but of course, they make Mary equal with Christ, which is unscriptural. It's, that's against the Bible. But you have a growing number of liberal churches who would deny that Jesus is God. So here's what Thomas came to realization of. After eight days again, his disciples were within. This is after the resurrection. After he's rose from the dead, but he still has the, the nail holes in his hand. He still has the wound in his side. And then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Notice that Jesus attached faith to what he's about, to what uh, Thomas is about to say. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. And again, Jesus doesn't correct him. He doesn't say, no, don't call me God. He doesn't say that. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. And this is what I was saying uh, last weekend. Be 
Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. I've not seen Jesus. I'm going to. But I've never seen him. But I believe him. I believe him. I've talked to him. Okay? I've seen his work and the proofs of his work in my life and other people's lives and the creation. I see it in the scriptures. I believe that Jesus is God. He is part of the Godhead. Um, but like Israel, Israel saw the miracles. They were fed with manna every day. Food literally fell out of the sky every day. And they went and were fed every day by God himself. Uh, they saw the Red Sea parted. They saw Moses strike the rock and water come forth out of it. They saw God himself on the mountain uh, covered with a cloud and a pillar of smoke and fire. And they heard the voice of God directly coming from the mountain. And yet for all of that, they refused to believe what God said. They refused to trust what God said. And so God let them wander in the wilderness and die without faith. John chapter 10, verse 30. I and my father are one. See, he does not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He does not, and th this is what the word robbery means. Stealing God's glory. Or attributing something that you do or I do to ourselves rather than giving the glory to God. If something wonderful has happened or you did something wonderful, that was God that did that. When you take his glory away from him, you are stealing from God. That's the robbery part. So when Jesus said, I and my father are one, he's not... This is not robbing God of his glory because he said in John 17, 20, in fact, turn to John 17, 22. This is an important verse. In fact, while we're in John 17, there's another verse I'm thinking of. I don't know why it's not in my notes. Yeah. Look at first at John 17, 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Before the creation ever was, Jesus Christ was with God the Father and was had the same glory as God before the creation. And God the Father did not kill his son, did not accuse him of disobedience. He was with God the Father before the creation. And he shared the glory of God before the creation. That's what he's saying. The glory which thou, or excuse me, verse 5. The glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. And then in verse 22. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Yes, Steve? And verse 11. Verse 11. Thank you very much. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. And he's not talking to Pope Francis. Santa Padre, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Present tense. Present tense. So all these verses here, they're just, they're proving to you beyond any doubt that Jesus, and you have to be like the Jehovah's Witness. You have to take the whole Bible and retranslate literally every verse in it to squeeze out every form of deity out of Jesus. And I remember back in the days, Brady was, and, and Brad, Bradley, before they had come to the Lord, Brady was a Jehovah's Witness. Bradley was a Mormon. Every time I'd come up with something that I would think would prove 
from Scripture that Jesus was God. I couldn't wait for Brady to call. I'd just wait for him to call. Finally, he'd call. And I'd go, Aha! I got you now! And I'd say, okay, what about this verse? And he would read it out of the New World Translation, which was the old Jehovah's Witness. And I'm, and I'm going, oh, they got that one too. Oh, man. They were thorough. They were very thorough. But you know what the Jehovah's Witness did before the New World Translation? They had a publication of the King James and a list of all the phrases that people should either correct or cross out from the Bible. Incidentally, when the International Bible Society, when they started going from using the old Greek manuscripts to the, to the one, to the Nestle Eberhard Greek text, uh, the Nestle Aland Greek text, the one that's with all the new modern Bibles now, they had their out. They used that Greek manuscript because it omitted major portions throughout the entire New Testament that proved that Jesus was Lord, Jesus was God, Jesus was deity, Jesus was one with the Father. I mean, they had, they had, they had their Bible now ready to go because of that new Greek text. Uh, Hebrews 1, turn there. Turn to Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1. Who's it written to? Notice, notice the title. Who's it written to? Them Jews that Jesus still loves. Okay? Hebrews 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. How many things? Yeah, by whom also he made the world. So we have Jesus as the creator again, who being the brightness of his glory, that's what he said in John 17, share with, share with me the glory that we had before the world was who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. This is why God told the Israelites, do not carve out an image and say it's me. Because it won't be. I already have an image of me. It's my son. I look at J.R. and I look at J.R. And I see two J.R.'s. Okay? One in the image of the other. That's how it's supposed to work. Amen. And that's what he meant by that. The express image of his person and upholding all things by the world, by the word of his power. Atlas is not holding up the world. Jesus is, by his word. When he had had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels. He's not one of the angels. As he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, he's not even Michael the archangel. He's not Gabriel the archangel. He's Jesus. Um, in fact, while we're here, turn to Exodus 3. He is, however, the angel of the Lord. Let me show you this in Exodus 3. This is, as was portrayed by Charlton Heston... This is uh, Moses, Exodus 3, verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Who appeared in the, who appeared in the fiery bush, the burning bush? The angel of the Lord, God. Because he's going to say it in a minute. And he looked, Moses... And behold, the bush burned with fire, but the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. We would not say that. We would go, what in the world? Okay, we'd pull our phones out. And the Lord saw, look, who is it now? The Lord, capital L-O-R-D. 
And when the Lord saw that he turned aside the sea, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. Who's in the midst of the bush? The angel of the Lord. It says it. Appeared unto him in the flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. So who's there? God, the Lord, the angel of the Lord. All three are him. So who called Moses? Jesus. Okay. Who was with the two angels walking down the road to Sodom and they stopped at Abraham's house, Abraham's house for a meal? That was Jesus. Who is it that, that declared that a man by the name of Manoah, that his wife was going to have a child, and um, when, when that person disappeared, Manoah and his wife were scared to death for what reason? They expressly said, we've seen God face to face. Uh-oh, we're going to die. They said the word God. We've seen God face to face. Okay? Who was it that Jacob wrestled with all night long? It was Jesus God. Amen? All right, back to Hebrews 1. Verse 5. For unto... Um, yeah, for unto which of the angels said he at any, time, at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Now, hold on a second. Who did God say that to? That phrase, he sh I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Who did he say that to? Does anybody know? I'll give you a free DVD if you know. He said it to David. You get a free DVD, John. Got there on the table. Get it on your way out. Yeah? Oh, you're going to have to earn a whole stack. But he said that to David concerning his son. Now it's partially, only partially fulfilled in Solomon. Perfectly fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Mm. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to, my, be to me a son. See, this is the stuff going through my head. I was at an airport in Baltimore, Maryland, and a Jewish rabbi was there, and he was reading his Old Testament, the Tanakh, they call it. Is it the, yeah, the Tanakh is the Old Testament. And I wanted so bad to go over there and sit by him and say, understand this what thou readest. And I, I, my mind is just racing through verses like this. What Stephen said to the Jews to prove that Jesus was their Messiah. And God just, I just never, I just never did for whatever reason. Um, but anyway, he said, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And I will, again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. Verse six. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him and the angels of and, and of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God. See, there it is in the Old He's quoting Old Testament. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And another verse, and this is what Hebrews is doing. It's quoting you, it's quoting to the Jews all the verses that they already know. It's lining them up, pointing them all out, and saying, you should have understood all along that Jesus was going to be God. He was going to be equal with God. And he's going to be your Savior. But their eyes were closed. Um, verse 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. And they, sh and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up. These are all Old Testament verses. And they shall be changed. But thou art the same. And thy years shall not fail. 
But to the which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Okay? And where did he get that from? We just read it. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Okay? And Jesus himself was saying that to the Jews. Saying that David called his son his Lord. Therefore, the son of David is not just the son of David. He's the Lord, the son of God. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's see here. Um, just turn back to John chapter 5. I'll read this and we'll continue this next Wednesday night. If you, I hope you took notes. Study. Study this. Study this subject. There's more places that verify that Jesus was God. He admitted such. He proved it. The You're right. The devils. You mentioned the Gergesenes. But I believe that at the Gadarenes... The one who was full of a full of devil's legion at the gatherings called him the Holy One. That's an Old Testament name for God. The Holy One. That's a big matzo ball there. Okay? The devils knew he was God. The devils knew it. Now, John 5, verse 19. This is about. What's coming? Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what, and think about how you watched your dad do things. I watched my dad, my dad taught me how to deer hunt. Pick out a spot, squirrel hunt, rabbit hunt, fish. Taught me how to split wood. Taught me how to change the oil in my car, uh, which is a dying trick now. Um, the, you watched your father do things. I watched my father, and my dad was 6'7", so he was big, and I thought he was... A giant, he could pick up anything. But this is this is Jesus. Uh, whatsoever things he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. Now there's a question about and it's a it's a question in my mind it may not be in yours you may not have thought about it Jesus did make the statement that concerning the day and the hour of the Lord's appearing that no man knoweth the day or the hour not even the angels but my father only but at some point I believe God makes it known to the Son. And, and I don't think it's like, uh, Son, now, go. I don't think it's like that. My personal opinion, and I'm still, I would still search it out to see um, if I'm right or wrong, is that Jesus would know it after his ascension into heaven. This is my personal opinion. When I look at, like what he just said here, verse 20, For the Father loveth the Son, and sheweth him all things that himself doeth. How many things? All of them. And he will show him, and he will, future tense, show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. We also know later on in John, when we get to 14, 15, and 16, I talked about those chapters last weekend, some of my favorite chapters in the Bible. But it's, to me, it's very clear that 
to Jesus is given all things. All things were given into his hand. And I see that as being that once Christ hath fulfilled the purpose of his first coming, he now has all things in his hand, including by the book, the timing of his second coming. It's not, it's not a big deal, I don't think. Um, but it, it's just been a, you know, a problem in my mind. How is it that God withholds this from his son? This one singularly important day, the wedding day, the wedding day. How is it that the father continues to withhold this from his son? And even now that he sits at the right hand of the father, the father hasn't told him. So I, I like to think that at Jesus' ascension, boom, now he truly does have all things in his right, in his hand. Okay, just a guess. Uh, 21, for as the father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. For the father judgeth no man, but watch this, hath committed all judgment unto the son. You're going to stand before Jesus. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. And you're going to be judged by Christ. You're going to be judged not by sinners. There is an interesting YouTube channel. And I like it. Because apparently, in, I don't know if it's like this in the rest of the states, but in Florida, they broadcast live and then put it on YouTube when the Supreme Court of Florida has to reprimand, publicly reprimand judges. And if the judge has done something far worse than just a public reprimand, then the Supreme Court then says, you are now held off the bench for 30 days or you are 90 days suspension or whatever. Amen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I, I love it. I, it's, uh, I can't remember what it's a it's like a cop video channel, but they broadcast these judges that have done crooked things from the bench and they're publicly reprimanded before the Supreme Court and it's aired, broadcasted all over the state of Florida on probably some public TV channel and then it's stuck on YouTube. And you ought to see these judges' faces. I mean, it is... Up. Amen. Okay? And there's one county in Florida that without a doubt has more crooked judges than any county in Florida because the guy did the count 13 public reprimands of judges in Broward County Florida remember the 2000 election what was one of the crooked counties in the election that they had to recount all the votes Broward County while most of the counties in Florida had zero to one reprimand. Broward, Broward County, 13 judges. Anyway, judges can be crooked and pass on crooked judgment. You're not going to be judged by a crooked judge. You're going to be judged by the one who did everything right. The sinless one who doesn't care about your money. Doesn't care about your status. Doesn't care about your skin color. What side of the tracks you live on. What country you come from. Or who your daddy was. Okay. That all men should honor the son. Even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son. Honoreth not the father which hath sent him. Now. Do you understand. That Jesus himself. Has just told you. That in order to be saved. You have to believe that Jesus is God. All, that he said. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. See, he just said it. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. How do you get, how do you get zero condemnation for the things you've done? Believe what Jesus say, said. Somebody say amen. Amen. So, do you have to believe that Jesus is God? Yes. He is not, not God. Amen? Yes. 